Last time on Drenched, I took you along for a day in the life of my wonderful and sometimes bizarre profession of being an underwater videographer. This is the glamorous part, getting paid to do what you love, scuba dive, go on adventures, be creative and make art. But this is just a fraction of what I do when I'm traveling. Some of it is mundane, some of it flat out sucks, and some of it is still pretty awesome. This episode is a bit of a mixture of it all. It's authentic, it's wild, and well, it's a little bit of the real me. The world is open wide, I wanna feel alive, I hear adventure call. Why am I packing my bags, you ask? To go to Cozumel, of course. And why was I going to Cozumel, you may also ask. Well, to make a long story short, I needed some hard drives of projects that I was working on at home. And for some reason, they wouldn't mail them to the address I gave in Tulum, but they would send it to Cozumel. So I hopped on a bus, and then a ferry, and began what seemed like a pretty excessive mission just to get a piece of mail. But luckily, there was also scuba involved. We're heading out straight into the gray clouds. <laughs> I can hear thunder in the distance, so it should be an exciting day out on the boat. made it through the wind and the waves and we made it to our dive site. The water is like this crazy color blue that I don't think it exists anywhere else in the world but Cozumel. So I can't wait to get in and see what's down there. It is so trippy to jump into the water and look down 50 feet to the bottom and see the light glimmering in the sand like the bottom of a swimming pool. It kind of feels like you're in outer space. We worked our way over towards a drop-off that was made up of towering walls, swim-throughs, and colorful bursts of life everywhere you look. This was my first dive in a while that wasn't for work, and it felt so good to just enjoy the simple pleasure of breathing underwater. No expectations, no deadlines, just you and the big blue. a lovely morning in Cozumel and I just woke up and checked out of my hostel and that package was supposed to arrive yesterday but it didn't so now I've got basically an entire day to kind of kill here on Cozumel so I'm not really sure exactly what I'm gonna do <laughs> I started basically just wandering the streets of Cozumel with no plan and pretty much created one of the least compelling top five things to do in Cozumel list Number one, admire the art. Number two, get your feet cleaned at the fish spa. Number three, when in doubt, film a time lapse. Number four, pet the horsies. And number five, geocaching. I'm on a bit of a, a different mission today. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this thing called geocaching. It's like an app on your phone and you use it to find little treasures that people have hidden and you can do it all over the world so I looked on the app this morning and there's actually a lot of geocaches around so I'm gonna take you guys along on a little treasure hunt with me <laughs> you just look at the map and then it has this little thing right here where you turn it until the line goes in between the arrows and that's the direction that you want to head in to find the object so looks like we're gonna head off Okay, so I'm really close, and now it's kind of somewhere in this general vicinity, and the app guides you to the basic area, but then once you're there, you kind of have to really look for it. So the description says, dive right in, and there's this place right here called Aqua Safari. 
so I think it might be in here. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> uh, gracias. Do you have people coming in here a lot for this? Yeah, not sometimes. Yeah. Okay, so this is my first time finding this type of thing in the geocache. So it's called, I guess, a travel bug and you take it from one geocache and you leave it at another place. And it's got this little tag on it that you can log in and register it and show which place you brought it to. I think I'm going to take it with me to Tulum and leave it at a geocache there. <laughs> the fun and games were over though, because a storm was a brewing. All of a sudden, it was raining cats and dogs. So my only option was to take refuge in a tequila shop. Hola. Mira, this is Adrian. This is my friend. He can introduce the best uh, tequila town. Hola, me llamo Jordan. Hola. Mucho gusto. So what's your favorite tequila here? Uh, I, I like know there's a lot brand. of choices. <laughs> yeah, too many choices, but I like them. Aromas, me in Jalisco. Cool. That's really good. The free samples were flowing and they even had a bunch of flavored tequilas like vanilla, chocolate, and almond. As I worked on a nice little daytime buzz, I got the news that my package had arrived. So it was time to get back to Tulum and hunker down for some serious editing. I was talking to Nate on the phone last night and he was asking me, you know, what are what are your plans? Like what do you want to film for episodes? Honestly, I was like, man, what have I even been doing? I've been like editing every day, almost all day. So today I woke up and I was like, man, I need to film something for the episode, but I still have so much work to do. So I decided that I would just kind of take you guys along on one of my typical days in Mexico since I've been here. I hope it's not too boring. I hope you guys enjoy it. Yeah, so basically my plans are for day. Um, before it gets too hot, I'm gonna go maybe for a quick a little run or a jog. And then after that, um, what I've got to work on today, I'm actually editing a drenched episode. And then I'm also working on getting our merchandise store live and online. So hopefully by the time you see this video, maybe you already have a drenched t-shirt that you're wearing right now. I don't know. I'm actually wearing one right now. So. Here's this little shameless plug. It says, more bubbles, less troubles. Then it says, drenched, right there. I'll put the link to our shop right in the corner up here. <laughs> you wanna check that out. Let's go. If ever I a video. Yeah, there's like street dogs everywhere in Mexico and they're all really friendly. So it's kind of hard to go for a jog without stopping to pet them. They're so cute. But yeah, so this is the uh, the neighborhood that I'm staying in. It's called La Valeta. And as you can see, it's like, it's kind of a mix of like really nice like luxury hotels and real estate. And then half of it is construction and then half of it is like local. But it's great for people like me that are looking for a budget place to stay it's just far enough out of town that um it's a little bit cheaper but it's still a really beautiful area they said that you loved me all alone. Now I see just if you're ever wondering you do not need a sauna in mexico all you have to do is do any kind of physical activity during any daylight hours and you will work up the best sweat of your life <laughs> Well, that was a lovely run, and now it's time to get to work. So, welcome to my editing cave. This is where I've been spending about 90% of my time since I've been in Mexico. I'm sure you've heard me talking about Koch, the dive center that I've been working with, 
and I'm making about, I think like nine different videos for them. I've also got maybe like three or four other videos for other businesses that we've been working with um, since we've been in Mexico. So today, specifically, I really need to get a new drenched episode out in the next couple of days here. And right now, I'm about to do a part of the episodes that something that you might not really think about, how it happens, but I'm gonna show you how I make the voiceovers for the episodes. Um, when I look back at some of our earlier ones, like our very first episode, for example, uh, the voiceovers, I think, are really bad. <laughs> They're like really, really fast, super high-pitched. It sounds like I'm in the middle of doing like a cheerleader routine or something. It was an absolutely perfect day. We did a leisurely cruise up the coast, stopping at lookouts and whatever else caught our attention along the way. As we flew the drone in, we crossed right over a fun little surf break too. Don't miss next week's episode where we dive some of Oahu's best wrecks, then get into some shenanigans roaming the streets of downtown Waikiki. Um, and I think once I realized that it was going, that they were always too fast, then I started doing them like really, really slow. And I went through another phase that uh, many of you in the comments called my, my soft porno voice. We finally immersed our bodies in the therapeutic volcanic waters. And yet, there we were. Scrub all the buildup from the hull from being in the dirty lagoon water. Oh, anyways, this is where my voiceovers are at today. This is how they're made. And I'm sure in a year from now, I'll look back on this video and I'll be laughing at how bad these voiceovers sound as well. So. I don't know why, but uh, for some reason I feel kind of like nervous doing this on camera. <laughs> it's kind of like a private thing normally. I'm always in the room by myself because I can't have distractions and I can't have any other sounds. And for whatever reason, I get kind of like self-conscious doing it. Like if Nate walks in and I'm recording voiceovers, I get all kind of bashful. It just feels weird to do it in front of you guys, but I'm going to do it for you. So you're welcome. Here we go. The Bianca Sea has one of the most interesting histories of any wreck I've ever dived. The Bianca Sea has one of the most interesting histories of any wreck I've ever dived. Ten days into the trip. Ten days into the trip. Ten days into the trip. With the help of numerous... With the help of numerous... With the help of numerous small Grenadian boats. With the help of numerous small Grenadian boats. But they were unable to stop the flames. But, but they were unable to stop the flames. But they were unable to stop the flames. And sank to the ocean floor in about 160 feet of water where she still rests today. And there you are. That is how the voice of our magic happens. You are welcome. <laughs> the weeks continued to fly by, and before I knew it, I had spent two months in Mexico. It wasn't all work though. I had accumulated some pretty special friendships along the way, which isn't always easy to do at the pace that we normally travel at. Whether it was birthday parties in a cenote, bike missions, or beers on the beach, I have so many memories that I cherish from my time there. And as my last days left were winding down, I decided to go on a last hurrah adventure with my friends Marina and Tony to the tiny island of Holbosch. We're on our way to a town called Chiquilla, where we'll hop on a ferry over to the island of Holbosch. And Holbosch looks really, really cool. It's most famous for whale sharks and flamingos. So if we can see one, hopefully two of those things, I'll be really, really freaking stoked, so. We just saw a massive tarantula crossing the road. I've never seen a tarantula in real life before. It's so cool. Oh my God, look at this tarantula. Ah! I don't know if you can tell how big it is, but it's probably almost the size of my hand. Okay, bye little buddy. Check it out, we made it, woo! Oh, the name of the, the town we are now at if it's pronounced Chikia, not Chikila, I'm not yeah. sure. It kind of means something really interesting in Bulgaria. It's a hand job. So <laughs> this is the hand job town when you get a ferry. Yeah. think about me, all things will do. Woohoo, we made it! 
It was kind of like anticlimactic. We drove all the way here and then you get on the ferry and the ferry's like 10 minutes long. And then all of a sudden you're here, just like that. So Tulum is right here. This is where we started. And then we drove up here to Chiquilla. And then we took the ferry right here to Holbosch. And right now we are, this is like the town right here in the middle of the island. And that's pretty much all there is. Um, and the rest is just like beaches and wilderness. There's so much water everywhere on the street. <laughs> and we're just trying to figure out where the places that we're staying. We have no idea and nobody's heard of it. Uh, yeah. You know it? Okay. Yeah, go. Okay, perfecto. We piled into the golf cart taxi and boogied over to our jungle hut home for the next two days. We've got our bunk beds for brother and sister over here. It's like being at camp. Don't fight over there, you two, okay? Be nice to each other. Okay. <laughs> Once we got settled in, our first order of business was to find some flamingos. We heard that one of the best places to see them is only accessible by boat. So off we went to the main jetty to organize a trip. We just had a really long briefing in Spanish and I think I understood most of it. So it should be good. We're gonna go find flamingos, wherever that takes us. I can't really see them because I have bad long distance vision, but Raul says he can see like tons of flamingos right up ahead. I'm so excited. Flamingos look like they're ice skating when they walk around. It's great. Their necks are so, it reminds me of like a camel's neck, like it turns in every direction. They'll like reach around to scratch their head. You can't even tell like which head belongs to them. So good. We ran through the rain into the Yumbalam Nature Reserve, which is home to the largest freshwater reserve on the island, which also used to be an important stop for pirates to top up their water. Ready? Ready to get wet before we get wet in the rain. I don't know if the audio is very good on this GoPro right now, but the thunder is really loud. It's so cool. Right there. Hello, Mr. Crab. It's cool, like places like this, yeah. there's just so many parts of the of the ecosystem, I guess. Like there's all kinds of all crazy hidden life, like from teeny tiny things, you know? We just arrived at Passion Island and I see some more flamingos. This is just incredible. So many birds. Holbosch is like one of the best birding places. We've got flamingos and frigates and seagulls and pelicans and all kinds of crazy animals living together in harmony in this wonderful little spot of paradise. I think if I was a bird, I would A, I would want to be a flamingo and B, I would want to be a flamingo that lives right here in this exact spot. It feels like you're just walking on water out here. It's so cool. This is amazing. Yeah, I've never seen such a calm lagoon like, like this. So, so peaceful. In case Passion Island wasn't breathtaking enough on its own, the group that was with us on the boat had a little extra pizzazz to add to the magic because these guys were a cheerleading squad. I want to see some cheerleading moves. Woo! <laughs> that was amazing. 
I didn't think she was gonna go so high. I wasn't ready for it. What's the name of your cheerleading group? Uh, Top Athletics. Top Athletics. Yeah. yeah. We'll. Uh... Mexico City. <laughs> We came straight back from our tour and I'm on my way to try and catch the tail end of sunset because I can see through the trees and it's like super pink and orange and amazing so hopefully I can see, still see something really incredible. Are you ready? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what are we doing today? Well, we'll go whale sharking and gonna be amazing. I can't wait. We have, it's like a two hour ride out to where the whale sharks are. Here we go. I'm so excited. We were on our way to witness the world's largest aggregation of the world's largest fish, the whale shark. The whale sharks gather in unbelievable numbers in an area that spans about 11 miles to the north of the Yucatan Peninsula. During a flight to record the number of individuals in this annual aggregation, Scientists have recorded up to 420 animals at once. What draws these beautiful creatures in such large numbers to the same area year after year? Well, whale sharks feed on plankton, and every year this area is the site of a massive spawning of a small Atlantic tuna species. And these gentle giants come to feed on the tiny transparent eggs that number in the trillions during summer months. Okay, first jump. Excited. Oh, no. These eyes never open until I saw you. My heart's now unfolding. and there was a manta ray coming towards us. And then I looked over and there was like five or six other mantas behind it. And then I looked up and there was another whale shark. It was so crazy, it was amazing. There's really no feeling in the world like being in the water next to an animal like this. The ocean's most captivating creatures have a way of stripping your mind of all thoughts and words and filling your body and heart with pure joy and awe. In that moment, your brain is completely switched off and your whole being is just emotion. Time slows down and then speeds up. And it's these moments that keep me coming back to the ocean for dive after dive. It's addictive, really. A chance to escape all the weight and clutter of our busy minds and feel what it's like to truly be in the moment. And the person who I am when I'm in the ocean, that's the real me. Tune in next time for something that's a little different for us. And now for something completely different. <laughs>